is important for both productivity and safety. Soldering will result in varying degrees of fumes that you should try not to breathe in. Make sure wherever you're soldering, fresh air can circulate. Solder also contains lead, so it's best if you cover any open sores and wash your hands afterwards. Please don't put any solder in or around your orifices. Also, you'll want to wear protective eyewear at all times. Remember, you're working with molten metals. You really don't want that in your eyes. Have a safe place to put your iron when not in use, as well as a damp sponge for regular cleaning. Now that you have all of that out of the way, you're ready to start. When you have a new soldering iron or just a new tip, you'll need to add a coat of solder to the tip. This is called tinning and is most important the first time you heat up this fresh tip. It will help prevent the tip from oxidizing, allowing it to continue to properly melt the solder. Always add fresh solder when making a new connection. This will help with heat conductivity. Remember to clean your iron regularly. Solder has difficulties adhering to connections when there's contaminants present. So now that you've got your iron ready, there's a lot you could do with solder, but knowing how to solder a good connection will save a lot of time backtracking. When soldering a basic PC board connection, place the leads through the correct side of the board. Then press the soldering iron to the metallic ring and the lead and add solder to the connection, not the iron. The solder should form a smooth pool that's silvery in color, connecting the leads to the PC board. It should be cone shaped and slightly convex. When soldering wires, first strip them to an appropriate length, then twist them into a small type braid. Now you have to tin them. To do this, Place the tip of your iron on the metal braid. Next, add solder to the heated wire, and it will spread thanks to capillary action. Now you're ready to solder this wire to anything, like other wires or a circuit board. Some connections call for something known as welling. This means you're going to heat up the surface you wish to solder to and add a pool of solder. Then, when you're adding whatever you wish to connect, reheat the pool and create a solid connection. Everybody makes mistakes, so it'll be useful to know how to fix them as well. The problem though is that working with solder, it's easy to make things even worse if you don't know what you're doing. That's where desoldering comes in. There are several tools you can use to remove solder from your project. A flex-coated copper desoldering braid or mesh can be used to desolder, taking advantage of the same capillary action that helps you tin wires. A suction tool like the desoldering bulb or the desoldering pump can be used to quickly lift solder from your project. Bridge connections are when the solder spreads from one component to another and creates a bridge. Electronically, this is called a short in your circuit. To fix it, you'll need to desolder and try again. Cold connections. These connections will look dull and uneven. There are a few reasons for a cold connection. Dirt and contaminants, or not properly heating the leads or pad before applying solder will cause it not to bond properly. These connections are brittle and uneven. Sometimes you just put things in backwards and that's fine because you're human. Just check all of your work again and see if everything is going the right direction. If not, you'll have to do some desoldering. Thanks for watching AC Gears TV and come back for a few more soldering tips in the future.